Hello everybody, today we are making a potato battery and exploring the science behind why potatoes create power. We're also going to take a look at whether you could use this in an apocalypse situation to survive. Let's go! Okay, hopefully y'all know that batteries contain power. You can use them to power things like flashlights or radios or smartphones or anything like that. But did you know you could make a battery out of a potato? Yes, we're going to explore this today. Now, before we get into this, let's get something out of the way. There is no inherent power inside of a potato. There's no voltage that you just need to unlock. The actual power comes from two different types of metal. So today I'm going to be using zinc and copper, and these two materials and the reaction between these two materials is what causes the flow of electrons. And we'll explain all that later. Let's make this right now. The most simple form of potato batteries. You're going to need a copper diode and a zinc diode. You stick them in a potato, and what do you got? You got a battery. Right now, if we were to connect this, uh, let's just connect them right now and turn on my measuring tool. One potato that is raw and uncooked is approximately 0.9 of one volt. So if we were to connect two of these in series, we should get about 1.8 volts. And we'll just try that right now. We have, I don't know if you can see this, I'll show you later, 1.76 volts from two uncooked potatoes. There are ways you can bump the voltage up using potato batteries, but I'll cover that a little bit later. Just as another visual way that you can see that this is actually working and producing power and voltage, I'm just going to connect it to this little digital clock. So if I were just to connect power right there, the clock is actually turned on now and it will run as long as there are electrolytes inside of these potatoes. Now, Let's get into why this works. A potato battery is a type of battery that is known as an electrochemical cell. The chemicals zinc and copper, which we are using in our diodes, uh, react with each other and which produces chemical energy. This chemical energy is converted to electrical energy by a spontaneous, instantaneous electron transfer. The potato acts as a buffer material and an electrolyte for the two metals. And we don't have to use potatoes, we could be using strawberries or lemons. It really doesn't matter too much as long as it can act as an electrolyte. This means that it separates the zinc and the copper, forcing the electrons trying to get from one metal to the other to travel through the potato and form a circuit. The electrons are able to flow through the potato because it acts as an electrolyte. The two metals would still react if they just touched each other, but without the barrier of the potato, nothing would happen. It wouldn't form a circuit. And that circuit is what powers this little digital clock. Isn't that cool? If you're looking to get a little bit more in depth of why copper and zinc react and they create that chemical energy, Go check out the video we made where we actually just made a battery uh, using some more advanced chemical procedures. So go check that out, but for now, let's see how efficient we can make this process. This potato that you see here, I actually bought from a kit, and I'll link that down below if you want to pick up one for yourself. And it comes with a nice little digital clock and some wires and the actual zinc and copper anodes. But you do not actually need to buy a kit to do this experiment. And I'll show you what I mean, because copper is everywhere. You could, okay, I have pennies. Pennies made of copper. Pennies are great for this experiment. Zinc, well, roofing nails, anything that is galvanized or electro-galvanized, they're covered with zinc. Most screws are coated in zinc. So really, you probably have everything you need in your house right now to do this experiment. So. Let's test it out. So I'm going to remove my professional kit with the copper and zinc. I'll leave those over there. And I'm going to replace them with a nail in the potato. And well, we'll do two in series. So go there and there. Okay, so I have some copper wire that I had laying around from a previous experiment. I've stripped off the end of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this penny with this loose strands of copper wire, just so that there's a really nice connection between the penny and 
the wire. So the end result is going to be, hopefully, that we have a copper penny wrapped with copper wire as the one end. It doesn't have to be fancy. So there we go. We have a we have a wire with a copper penny on one end. Now, you're going to need to push this into the potato and you can cut it with a knife and just slide it in or just force it to go in to the potato. You just need to make sure that it gets nice, good contact inside that potato, just like that. Wrap the other end around your zinc-coated nail. And again, this doesn't really have to be very fancy. Just make sure that there's nice, good contact between the copper and the nail. There we go. Push that guy in there, and that guy in there. That's it! We have a copper penny, zinc, zinc, and we need one more copper penny. In this case, I'm just going to push a copper penny directly into the potato. Now this should create 1.8 volts of electricity. So I'll connect that alligator clip there, that there, and I'll match it with my measuring tool here. And what does that create? 1.9 volts of electricity. And if we wanted to switch this up, I can connect this to my digital clock. And voila! It is powering. So this, I've created enough power to power a clock, a stopwatch, using nothing but copper pennies, copper wire, potatoes, and roofing nails. So this is a very basic battery. Now, how would this help you in an apocalypse situation? Well, I'm glad you asked. Say a solar flare comes and knocks out the entire power grid, and you have no way to turn on a light. I'm not sure what I would do in this situation. I probably wouldn't spend the time to make a potato battery. I'd be probably running for my life from cannibal zombie, zombies or something. I don't know. But if you had enough time and you wanted to make a cool little clock or a flashlight, you could build this using very basic materials. It's very possible to use this system to do things like charging a phone. I mean, you'd, you'd need a lot of potatoes, and you'd need to bump up the efficiency quite a bit, but still, that's incredible. There are ways to make these potato batteries much more powerful and much more efficient. So the most easiest way to do it, I guess, would be just to buy lots and lots of potatoes and string them all together, and what do you got? More power. But quickly the cost will balloon into something that is quite prohibitive, because it's hard to get that many potatoes. What about making them more efficient? Well, the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, in Israel, released findings stating that if you boil a potato for eight minutes, cut it into quarter sections, and then sandwich those pieces in between copper and zinc, the cost of power is one-tenth the cost of the cheapest AA battery. So theoretically, this technology could power remote locations in third world countries or developing nations where it's just hard to get enough electricity to meet their demands. This could create cheap, reliable LED lighting for houses anywhere in the world. Now, that's kind of difficult to put into practice because it turns out when they tested this, people just ate the potatoes because they were hungry, and they needed food more than they needed electricity. So maybe we, had a, maybe we had better solve that problem first, but still, this is a very cool application of chemical science. So cool! This is Destructive Creativity. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you click that subscribe button and the like button. It helps us out as a channel, and we bring cool science facts and experiments for you every single Wednesday morning. So, see you next time! I'm Jonathan Allers for Destructive Creativity. Bye!